What's going on guys? Casey Mo here. So I've seen way too many easy to raid bases. So in this video, I'm gonna teach you guys how to not suck at building. But Casey, I have thousands of hours in Rust and I already know how to build. Well, listen up here, son. Because I've seen people with over 5,000 hours in Rust still messing up their base designs. I have a video I'll link in the description where I raid some of the most experienced players in the game without using a drop of explosives. And it's not because they're stupid. It's not because they're bad at the game. They just probably don't know. So this video is meant to help out both new players and experienced players from getting cucked so easily. Let's do this. Don't place your walls backwards. So when building, it's important to know which way to place your walls. Because one side is easy to tool raid, but the other is still possible, just extremely harder to do so. So this is what the soft sides look like, and this is what the hard sides look like. The top of the foundation is a soft side, and the bottom of the floors are also the soft side. And real quick, just to show you guys what it's like to tool raid, is what it looks like. Wood gets taken down extremely fast, it takes two hatchets, the stone's a bit harder to do, at about one HP per hit, seven pickaxes, and metal is still doable at about one HP per two hits, just takes a hell of a lot longer to do. And as you guys can see, hitting the hard side of the wall is still doable, but if you just take the time to farm stone nodes, you'd probably get through the wall faster by making C4 with the farmed materials. But don't build overhangs you can boost on. All right, so this is a big one. I see a lot of new players doing this. They have a balcony, which is cool, but it's too low. And as I just showed you guys, you can tool raid on the soft side of walls and floors. So the raiders were easily able to boost up to the second floor. And at this point, they could lure the builder out or they could see if we're right in and gain access to their second floor. Don't build small gaps. You can Spider-Man jump up. All right, this here is called Spider-Man jumping. When walls are placed this close to each other, you can shimmy up the side of the base, giving you access to the builder's roof. The reason this is so bad is this gives the attackers the freedom to choose where they want to raid your base from, and they can easily shoot you from your own roof when you walk out of your base. Airlocks. All right, so this is the perfect reason why you need what's called an airlock in your base. Every base needs an airlock. You only have one door, it makes it super easy for the attackers to door camp you and get into your base. So this is an easy way to prevent the previous problem. Since there are two doors to get to your main base area, it's no big deal if you get killed in the airlock, since the raider only has access to an empty room. Just make sure you don't open up any more doors. This is where most people go wrong. Just spawn outside in a bag you placed, and try your best to shut the front door. Build at least two entrances. So this is a huge one I see even with people with thousands of hours still doing in the game. You need to make sure that you have more than one entrance in your base. I've done this so many times where if we have an enemy around our base, I'll build a tower right outside their only door and have someone watch their door so they can't farm any of my nodes. An easy way to fix this is simply have a second entrance on the opposite side of the base. You don't need to start your base with two entrances, but just be sure you have two entrances when upgrading your base. Don't build next to rocks. I've seen many new players build next to rocks, but even though it gives you a bit of extra protection from the rock side, it also allows players to easily get on top of your roof and attack you from the top down. Don't take your key outside. So there are two tiers of locks and rust. There's a key lock and there's a code lock. If the player finds your key, they'll be able to open that door, giving them access to any loot inside your base. Try your best to get a furnace down as fast as possible to get metal frags for a code lock, but until then, I like to leave my key inside my base and build in. And here's just an example of how you can build in your base. Don't log off with a wooden base. All right, so before you log out for the day, be sure to upgrade your base from wood to stone. Twig and wood is easy to break and a flamethrower makes quick work of both. Don't build next to other groups. So most players are hostile and rust. So try your best not to build next to other players because that is likely to happen. Don't place items too close to your base. Careful placing deployable items outside of your base because if you place them too close, it makes for an easy opportunity to get on top of your base, or you can choose to raid the second story instead of the first. Don't take out too much stone at a time. 
All right, so this is a pretty big one. And when you're building, you wanna take out small increments of wood and stone to build at a time. Because in this game, if there's something that can go wrong, it most likely will go wrong. So I would recommend taking out maybe, maybe three to five K stone and having someone watch your back while you're building. If you're playing by yourself, you might do one or two K. Because if you don't, you're gonna see this very familiar view. In the last three hours you just farmed for, it's gone to waste. Base defense. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is base defense. Um, I see a lot of bases that just have this windows, and of course you'd have window shutters on, but um, just to give you an idea here, you can see really far, really well, um, but what you can't see is people right up on your base. Like if someone's right here, I'm not gonna be able to shoot them. See, I barely can see that rock down there. This is good for roof camping, but if you're killing people far off from the distance, killing nakeds and stuff like that, I mean, what are you gonna do? Are you gonna go over there and loot them? So what I like to do, uh, there's a few different options here. So this one is pretty standard, just open door. You can see down a lot easier, but with this way you can get headshot kind of easy. So that's why I have the sign here. So it's a lot harder to get headshot. You can stand up and look down, uh, or if you need to shoot a little further, you can kind of back up and go like that. So, um, so that's one option. Another thing I see a lot of people doing are ladder hatches. You can shoot down really well. You can see people right up on your base. So that's another option. Uh, these are two of my favorites. So this works really well because you can actually pre-fire people. You can see them, they can't shoot you through the stairs and then you just pop out and shoot them, you know? Uh, and the stairs do need to be placed in this direction. Um, see if you place them like this, you can't really use this uh, to block your, your angle. So they need to be placed like this. And then you can place doors just like this. And you can also shoot people just like right there. But keep in mind, um, you, you can't fall out of here, but it is really easy to have your uh, gun fall out. So normally when you're shooting people, you want to stay on the concrete, you know, but you don't have to worry about falling out. Or at least I haven't. If you have a small character model, uh, you might, but um, I've never had a problem with falling out of that. Don't line up your ladder hatches. All right, roof access. Roof access is a very important thing, but... It needs to be done correctly. So being on your roof is probably the best way to defend your base um, when you have stuff like this. But uh, I see a lot of people that have direct paths, uh, ladder hatch paths to their roof. So uh, if you get access to one ladder hatch, you pretty much have easy access to the entire base. So with ladder hatches, they don't take a lot to break. As you can see, this, this takes no time, especially if you have a few people to do this with and you can just head jump up. Um, another thing is if you get ray towered up, ladder hatches don't cost very much uh, to get through. It's just a simple four satchel charges. Um, so they'll have a direct path all the way down your base uh, if they ray tower up and then you have access to all floors. All right, so a few different options uh, besides ladder hatches. You can use the old fashioned stairs. I normally like using double doors here because uh, it's easier to walk through since the stairs go up the side. All right, and here's another option I like, just using roofs. Use roofs just for, uh, you know, kind of like acting like stairs. Uh, the roofs do need to be attached to uh, some sort of door frame or wall or something. Um, so as you can see underneath this floor, that roof is attached to that one, so. Understanding the cupboard. And knowing how the cupboard works is a very important thing when building as well. So the tool cupboard makes it so you can't build in certain areas. So there's a tool cupboard right here. Unless I touch it and authorize on it, I won't be able to build. So see, I'm building block now and I can't build anywhere around here. But uh, the cupboard is actually not a perfect sphere. So I'll show you what I'm talking about here. I can actually build down here, but I can't build up here. So the bottom of the cupboard is not quite as covered as the top. See, if I go all the way up here, I'm building block until just right about here, which is several stories above the cupboard. So knowing that, you always wanna place your cupboard on the lowest floor of your base, or at least the first cupboard. And there's some more advanced techniques that uh, I might teach you guys in future videos using the cupboards and stacking the cupboards and stuff like that. So it's always best to place your cupboard on the first floor. Uh, that way you get the most coverage 
to prevent people from building on your base or putting down bags right next to your base and just putting down annoying stuff around your base. Don't upgrade your entire first floor before building a second story. All right, so this is something I see a lot too, um, where people will upgrade their whole entire first floor before building up. Uh, the reason why this is important is because if you build your whole first floor first, if it's a huge footprint, then you're not gonna have any defenses uh, if someone were to come to raid you. So if you get on top of your roof, it doesn't really give you that much of a height advantage. Um, also, people can just easily head jump on top of your base and uh, they can take out a pretty big portion of your roof and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. All right, so with the rocket splash damage, I was able to take just about one fourth of the entire base uh, and make it open. So um, that's just one big reason why you don't build uh, just one story to start with. Um, instead, with something like this, I'll show you an alternative of what you can build to start and then you can later expand. All right, so here it is. Um, something like this is a lot easier to defend because you have roof access, you have a height advantage, and uh, they can't really get on your roof so easy where uh, with a single story they can just get on top of your roof and just camp your doors and uh, it's just it's just a nightmare if a, you know a bigger clan or something like that does that to you but with this you don't have to worry about that sort of thing and then you can easily expand it later into uh, what we did have just a second ago but this is just a more efficient way to upgrade your base in in steps So I'm going to be hosting a public event. I'm going to be playing with all of you guys as a thanks for my 40,000 subscriber special. If you guys are interested in meeting me and hanging out, follow me on Twitter at KCMOTV. I'll keep you guys posted about what we're doing and when. Also, for anyone who supports me, YouTube is not notifying everyone when we're posting videos. If you guys could hit that little bell thingy so you guys get notified when I post, I'd love you forever. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and making it this far in the video. Drop a like if this helped you guys out. And this is Casey Moe. You guys are watching Casey Moe TV.